Hello and welcome to Game Club. Today we'll be playing Bees, the game about, well, bees. And without bees, we would be, well, in a lot of trouble. So um, we love the bees. I say bees a lot. Anyway, join us as we play, review, and do all sorts of wonderful stuff as well. So, I'm going to unbox. Here we go. Wonderful. So, um, bees. Right, I'll start with the box. I love the box. I think it's, I love the colouring. I love the, the kind of small details. I just think it looks really good. That hive, the bee, the flowers, the bold colour. Really love it. Love the artwork as well. Uh, it says 8 plus, 2 to 4 players in about 30 to 45 minutes. One for now. You've got a, an instruction thing here about how to empty the box, which is always useful. You've got your rule book, which seems nice and light. There is also online a very good video for it as well but um oh i noticed an appendix which is always nice to see aha now you've got your bees calculator bees box your tokens you've got your cards movement marker scorecards and your bees all good and now let's just see i think if i lift this out there should be something underneath as well yep there we go of flowers themselves all at the bottom there and they look stunning as well anyway join us as we will now play and then review bees in front of me is the starter version of bees and as you can probably see here this is the booklet it'll tell you that uh, effectively it sets up the what they call the honeycomb um, the, this is the flat sorry the flower field itself uh, you have your honeycomb and I've put, I put out all four players here and I'll go through what they have to do but effectively that's how the floral arrangement the flower field has to look and as you can see it's uh, set out in front of us there um, you basically start with you place the tiles you, you obviously lay them out in front of you here uh, and then what you do is you populate each with a larger um, token in the middle and the smaller blocks on the outside the ring around the starting uh, field or basically from where the bees are does not have that central larger uh, token um, obviously that, that means that it makes it harder for the players as well what then happens is um, you will place your you will effectively choose who goes first and then you each place uh, the second person that is on the person who's the writer that that for the first player chooses where they place their bees and obviously then each person goes as according to that with the starting player going last now just to note with the bees themselves and you probably can see this they have uh, number directions this the, the forward facing it doesn't go forward facing you have to choose which way and each one has a particular thing so there's one of five two of four three spaces two of four one and five so that can be quite difficult and also quite fun as well uh, and the booklet itself explains this quite easy as it says here one space or five spaces in this direction uh, one space two spaces or four spaces three spaces two or four spaces which is quite easy you know then you've got your objective cards now these objective cards come in different colors they have different color pots so you have uh, purple you then have red you then have blue all you do is you shuffle them separately lay them down you take the top three and you place them here on the board and these are your objectives these are open objectives so you know everyone knows what they're trying to get and the first person obviously gets and gets the objective and then each player takes one of each of the cards and chooses which one they want to do so for instance our player one or who's player brown has, cho has chosen this which is three and two and then of course player purple has chosen two etc etc all the way through then we go on to the game itself once everyone's got everything they need just to note with the cards and it's probably useful to to kind of tell you about this you do get this very useful appendix which, which basically outlines what each of the cards do and this is something that I, if you played it for the first time definitely hold on to in fact we've 
now I've been playing it I think three times and we keep it by the board because it does need it sometimes you need to just have a refresh because sometimes it can be slightly confusing um, it's not so much what I call the the kind of uh, logical objective so that's the red cards which generally sort of show an image which you have to follow on your board which looks something like that and that's your honeycomb it's more to do with the ones which are slightly more what I call esoteric that's not demeaning them it's because they have slightly more uh, abstract goals but it's not that difficult once you kind of get into it anyway so the first thing you do is you will do the f I'll, I'll go through this actually show you but you've got your flight plan flying collecting nectar and then storing nectar and making honey so what I'll do now is I'll stop the camera in front of us we can see our bees all ready to go or our bees are in action uh, and I've kept into this uh, I think some of the angulations that we've been doing recently haven't been so great so I'm going to try and get a little bit more exciting uh, the further we go but this I think is the easiest way of uh, depicting it so you can actually see the bees and then you can kind of understand how they play so the first player is brown second player is purple third player is grey fourth player is green and what you do is effectively the first player will say okay which way they want to go my guy is going to go five in this direction so one two three four five so he'll end up here so you can move them if you wish we move them beforehand but they do say in the rules that you only move them the second round which is the flying and collecting of nectar but we we've, we've kind of combated that because I think their argument is if you don't do that you can end up bumping into each other ie what effectively happens is you end up with a bee sort of sitting on each other but we, we won't do that so anyway, we're going to go five here uh, so then so the next one will be purple he's going to go at five this is one two three four five there this bee will go five this way one two three four five here and then this bee will go simple he'll go one that way there we go now <clears throat> what happens is you then will collect your nectar so you will take the nectar that if you're as you can see i'll just show you the easiest way so this is connected to there so you can actually take that nectar so effectively this nectar can now be taken so you take that nectar and so that's our first player is scored and i'll place that i'm just going to place that there so we know where it is and then we've got our second player who's purple he'll take this one here and then green will take white sorry it should be actually gray and then green will take gray will take green right so now we've, we've got those collected you effectively now once you've once you've got it it says if B lands on a small space with a small nectar on its edge you may immediately take it and place it in front of you but if a bee lands on the center of a flower containing a large nectar you may take this together with one adjacent small nectar so just to know if you land here as an example you can take this and one of the small ones um, tricky to do at the start but it works better as you move around now the next part of it is called the storing nectar uh, and making honey what effectively you have to do is you can store storing the nectar is you manage to collect nectar in phase two you must now store it in a honeycomb each honeycomb has 19 chapters which so I'll just show you so you can see here. this is the honeycomb here um, nectar must be stored in an empty chamber in a row with a corresponding number to the flight uh, des uh, distance just completed so as an example if you look at our guy here he went five so you can go four five four five four five four five so effectively you can put in any of these you put it in and there you have it and we move to our purple and he's moved he's also moved five as well so he put his here and our um, gray has moved one so he can move it right in the middle there and obviously as you can see his target is there <coughs> and our green has moved five as well so just put it there um, and effectively that's it that's the game now the game ends as soon as one player is still 12 or more nectar so once 12 or more nectar is moved from the, the board the game ends you move then as you can see here you move in those directions following your scales here <coughs> three uh, one or five two or four etc etc and effectively that's the game you're looking at trying to get your cards get your uh, open um, your uh, open uh, cards as well so you're trying to get your open objectives 
your private objectives and then obviously you score. Now I do have little score books here but to be fair we generally haven't used them, we've used a piece of paper because we, we kind of don't want to ruin them because they're so nice. But that's bees. It, it, well, I guess I don't need to really elaborate any further. Speaking honestly about bees, the game of, well effectively bees and pollen and pollination and honey, um, I would say that this is probably one of the most consistent games I've played in a long time. Consistent because it doesn't require exceptional amounts of uh, exertion of energy, uh, that's either mental or physical. It's a game that uh, interacts well with multiple players over multiple ages and multiple uh, lifestyles, multiple um, experience levels, etc, etc, because it's a game that has very simple but very swift mechanics that are well defined and well plotted and, and established and planned. The game works very well in the sense that it doesn't sort of diverge too much away from the course, the simple course. You have got solid and very well defined objectives, although to be fair you will at the start, probably for a couple of games, need to refer to the appendix because sometimes it can be slightly abstract and I think I mentioned that in the playthrough. It's not a game that's going to tax you too much and in fact actually it's, I think it's the sort of game that will probably benefit from uh, shorter term plays like for instance the summer and I, I've been obsessed recently about games for the summer especially now post-covid or hopefully post-covid but it's not the sort of game I think is going to be a long term fix to uh, people who want a sort of substance game that they can play regularly and kind of uh, glean more from. Not because it's a bad game or because it's um, a, a sort of a poor structured game. Um, far from that. It's just I think it's not the sort of game that will, will kind of grasp hold of the attention or, or the, the uh, interest of people who are experienced gamers. That said, it looks amazing and I have to really commend the artwork for this game because I think it's really well invested in. It looks good, the pieces feel good. Unfortunately, no longer term they'll probably go, but I know this, at least this version, is, looks and feels good, plays good. You know, it, it, it's a good game. It's a, the sort of game that I like because I like games where people can group together, play and enjoy what's going on without, you know, you can sit there and have a chat while playing even though you know your objectives, you're still playing with a little bit of uh, light-hearted feel. It's not that kind of uh, aggressive, evil sort of competitiveness, Which, because I'm not no fan of that, I'll be perfectly honest with you. So, that was Bees. I'm Simon, and this is Game Pub, and thank you very much for watching.